Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today I'm going to give you a quick tip um, about shading. And you can do it quickly. Pretty cool, hey? Alright, now that's over. Um, I thought about this just like 10 minutes ago. I was like, I'll just run outside and do this because I think it could be broken down, like this, this entire idea about how to shade something effectively is, is difficult to comprehend, right? Um, how we're taught to tattoo nowadays doesn't really mesh up with like the mechanics of the actual machines working with the skin and the pigment that's there. Um, and so I thought I would give kind of like a tip. There's a bunch of these that I could do, but one that like, it just helps increase the speed of any tattoo that you're doing. And these are like cool tricks to bring out if you're under the gun, you're pressured to get something done quicker, you're on a really tight budget and you just want to crush it as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, let's let's go over first, right, how we are normally taught to shade. So if we have space X, right, on someone's arm, it's something, a design, a heart, a bird, or whatever, right? And when we're going to be shading off of stuff, we only have a few techniques we use, right? We'll have a flick shade or whip shading, right? You started something, you just kind of like flick out. Uh, creating a loose gradient uh, based on the machine speed. So your hand is supposed to actually start out slower and pick up speed as it goes on, right? Which will lead to a decreased amount of actual pigment that's being implanted into the skin uh, versus the part that starts that has more concentration because the hand is starting a little bit slower. Um, we'll be taught to do scupping, which is kind of the same thing, right? Where all we're doing is just kind of like pulling backwards. Um, and while we're doing this, basically just creating a, a hatch pattern off of a break on a line that we're doing, right? If we're trying to scup off of something to fill in space, we're basically just like running our needle back and forth, almost in a zigzag pattern. Um, very tight, very loose, whatever the thickness of the line that we're trying to work off of to shade off of is. And we'll be using a dispersion, right? Like a, a, a wash um, of a color or just black. We'll just stick with black here. It might be easier um, to create a gradient effect that's coming off of it, right? Um, another one will just be like, We'll have the, the wand method, right? Where you're just basically like floating something over top of it really quickly, relying on random patterns to create a general effect, right? Of shading being done. So if you do this enough times going back and forth, right? Starting at the longer strokes and slowly shortening them as you come in, you end up with this space that has a nice gradient, right? Um, the last one I see people using is is this circle bit and usually it works really well with rounded mags you keep it at like a tight or like a uh, 90 degrees off the skin and all you're doing is just like loose circles that overlap on top of each other and through that randomization right you'll slow down certain spots to make it darker versus not you'll get that you know nice loose shaded effect that everyone wants to see so these all work great but on average they usually take more time uh, to accomplish because you have to continually like rebalance the design that you're working with um, shade wise right because you're relying on that randomization if you have a spot that maybe gets a little bit too dark like ah, shit you know like I gotta go back and maybe make it a little bit darker or whatever so that the fundamental tattooing thing right like this is um, a trick that should help you at least improve so let's see if we grab another space we know we're gonna shade and I know that I want to go from a gradient of high concentration to low, right? What I'm going to do, easy enough, is I'm going to take that mid-tone of whatever I'm doing, right? And this is going to be my base. Um, what do I mean by base? This is going to be the minimal amount of, like, concentration that I want to have in an ink cap, right? That I'm going to be utilizing to shade this entire area. So... Uh, we're going to call this mid-tone, mid-tone blocking. Um, it works great and just makes things quick. If you try to do this, right, kind of speed up on some time. So uh, what we'll do is, I mean, if the skin doesn't look too chewed up, maybe we can do multiple passes on this. But realistically, what we're going to do is we're going to take a mag, hopefully that's large enough to fill the area that needs to be shaded. We're going to start from our highest concentration area, and we're just going to run one whole line with that mag so we see a bunch of little needle strikes, right? going through that section that we need to get shaded. Um, and then what we're gonna do is hop on each side past this to start dropping it back, right? So we'll have our three quarter space, our half, our one quarter. And all we're gonna do is move our needle up so that those lines are right next to the other ones and we'll run them three quarter, right? 
and then we'll go half a little bit further, right? And then we're gonna go quarter. And then we leave it alone. That's it. Smooth shading, really, really quick. Um, more often than not, if you're gonna be doing this mid-tone shading, this is gonna be multiple settings before you can actually get a gradient that looks good, uh, at least for the finished quality that you want. But what we're gonna rely on is that spacing between the needles, right? is not super traumatized so this should heal really quickly and i'll retain a lot of the pigment that's there so when we go back over it the next time right and we decide to do the same thing and start pulling up you know more my pen is totally toast start pulling up more pigment and putting it on top right what we're going to start seeing is a darker tone and gradient that's going to start and we just keep moving it further back as we go right we'll do full length with one we know that this is gonna be our lightest shade because what we've done is started over here, right? And as we move through, you're getting less pigment that's actually gonna be set into the skin because one, it's gonna be picking up plasma. Uh, two, more of it's gonna end up back here in the skin versus like what's at the end. And then three, just the distance to cover, um, you're gonna lose a lot of that pigment along the way, right? So yeah, anyway, so one pass, do it. Second time someone comes in, you can do this again. Usually it's three passes in my experience that works the best with this. But the third time you get into it and you're doing that same thing, right? And this is when you're gonna be getting into your solid blacks and maybe your highlights in the tattoo. You're gonna have this really nice, smooth, shaded area that's not gonna have a bunch of lifted or uneven sections. Kind of cool, hey? Um, so that's how we do mid-tone blocking. All we're doing is we're taking a design and we're gonna have a space, right, where we know that we're gonna have X amount of tones inside of it. And all we're doing is taking this, right? Out of that like block pattern, right? I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but it's a shading pattern, right? Where you have your darkest tone here, your next one up is gonna be a little bit lighter and the next one is gonna be a little bit lighter and then the last one's just whatever, right? All you're doing is just taking a blend between those two. And that's where we're doing our mid, that's our base. And we know that if we keep adding pigment you know, eventually it's gonna end up here because it's a dispersion, right? It doesn't mean that it's actually a lighter color. Um, it just means that there's less particles, you know, per cubic milliliter of pigment because it's been mixed with something else. So if you don't know what a wash is, let's just do this quick. A wash, and this pen is toast, a wash is also known as a dispersion. Right, a dispersion, what that means is if we take a bunch of really cool, we'll just do black again, right? We get some carbon black and uh, it's just a powder, right? What we're gonna do is put it into an ink bottle and uh, rather than filling it up for the maximum concentration so we get black, right? What we're gonna do is maybe create one bottle that we know is black, right? And then what we're gonna do is use this in three or four other bottles, right? Let's do a stubby here. So what we're gonna do with the next one is we'll do half black. We'll fill this up halfway with black. This one may be a quarter. What we can do is fill up half of this and then empty half of it into that. And then the rest of it's just gonna be filled with your, um, you're mixing like fluids, right? This is alcohol, distilled water, um, rose water, biocide, anyways, just anyways. It's a carrier fluid. So, um, yeah, we'll do carrier fluid. So what that does is it, it decreases the amount of total black that's in the bottle, right? Because if we know that we've got one quarter black and one quarter carrier fluid, or three quarters carrier fluid, the amount of black that we're gonna be able to put into the body, especially if we shake it really well, is going to be less than the black, solid black, like lining or tribal black bottle that we have over here, right? Because there's just going to be other stuff that's gonna be put in with it. You're gonna have that carrier fluid that's gonna be entering the skin. So. Uh, dispersions are just that, right? We've dispersed that quantity or quality, that quantity of pigment, regardless of quality, into lesser amounts, increasing the amount of carrier fluid that's going to be interacting with it, which causes, as we like run a needle, right? If we're running a needle, let's just do this, boink, into the skin, instead of having a bunch of pigment particles there, right? What we're going to do is we're going to have fewer pigment particles and more carrier fluid just kind of bouncing off the top of the skin, maybe being accepted into it, but being pushed out. So that's a dispersion. And that's why we do the mid-tones off this stuff, right? Because we can control that. If we're using a dispersion, we put it into the skin and I put a line in with it, that pigment, if it's in, in, you know, applied correctly, is in the skin. If I keep using that mid-tone and I go over it, I'm going to make it darker the more that I go over it, right? I mean, well, then I'll dry erase marker, but you get my point. Like you're just adding to that quantity of pigment that's already in the skin. 
It's not that you're doing something like with a marker, you know, or a paintbrush, uh, where you're trying to like blend something that's in there. It's it's totally different, right? This tattooing in my mind has always been more like sculpture than it has been, you know, um, painting or art. Because not only we're we working in 3D things, but we're removing bits of humanity to create the illusion of depth in a design. You could think I'm weird. That's fine. A lot of people do. <laughs> Anyways. We'll do one more here before I gotta go, because my babies are down for bed and I have the monitor out here and they seem to be very upset uh, because they're playing with their blankets and that evidently leads to trauma. Um, next one's gonna be a, a, a quick way to shade bevel, bevel lines. Might as well write this up here, bevel. Bevel, like we'll just do bevels, right? Um, more often than not, what I see people doing is starting, like if we want a bevel or a gradient where we know it's going to be darker on one side, right, and the lightest point is going to be in the middle, and what we're doing is trying to shade into it, people will normally start at the bottom of a line, and they'll end up flicking up to create that gradient, right? Um, th this works, but more often than not, what I see with people when they do this is they'll end up either getting lines, right? of the space in between like where those needle marks are gonna be because it's kind of difficult, especially with smaller groupings, to make them perfectly side by side. Um, or they'll have an overlap, right? Where like one spot's gonna be like super dark and the other side's gonna be super light. And so you, you get these like weird inconsistencies that take time to settle. And as the tattoo ages, because there is a greater quantity of pigment in this one area versus the other, it's always gonna look a bit darker throughout the person's life. So easy way to fix it is to take a needle that is equivalent to three quarters of the space, the thickness that you want to do. Let's say that this is, you know, one inch in thickness, right? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab like a 15 mag, you know, maybe a, a 17, 22, something, whatever, right? Um, if you make your own needles, it's way easier. <laughs> but if you buy pre-packaged ones, 23, you know, 27, 32, or whatever the numbers are that I do now. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my mag, right? my flat, whatever I'm gonna be using for filling slash shading. I'm gonna set it at the bottom of the line, but I'm gonna take this corner, right, that's gonna be nearest to that, that, that gradation that we want to be the lightest, right? We want this to be the lightest. And I'm gonna take my needle, and I'm going to pull it up at an angle, right? So if we show a needle like this right here, right? And the skin is going underneath it. I wanna have an angle, right, underneath this. So instead of just having it flat and pushing, right? I'm gonna roll it up a little bit. And the idea with that is that I'm gonna be taking the main part of the needles that are gonna come in contact with the skin at full depth. So they're creating solid, deeply saturated lines as they go. And as you're like picking that, that edge up, you're gonna be placing more superficial pigment in the top part of the skin, which is gonna decrease the amount of pigment that's in the skin, which is going to make it appear lighter, right? And just run it like a liner. You take it, instead of running it like this, about a 45 degree off of 90, right? And just run it straight. Make sure you're keeping it against the back of the tube. Uh, you know, at kind of a steep angle with these. Sometimes I found that works um, depending on what your throw is. I like to lead off the tube when I shade. Um, I know a lot of people lead off the needle, but um, you, you just want to make sure you're getting good saturation, but those, those top needles, the ones that are high, are not going to be going fully into the skin. Just do a single pull. If you see some of those lines that occur when you're doing it, that's fine, especially if you're using a mag, which what you can do with the mag if you want to, is when you, when you pull it out before you start technique like this, up by the, um, up by the, oh geez, up by the back where it's soldered on, uh, you can just take it and kind of press it down. So instead of the needles being, you know, spread out and, and woven, I can't do this with my hands very well, you can make them a, kind of flat, right? They'll still have a little bit of space on them, especially like side to side, but you can make them more of a flat just by pressing them down, a little squeeze, a little rub with your fingers. Um, and, but yeah, if you get these occurring, all you're gonna do is take that same technique and you're gonna judge, you know, where in relation to this lightest part you've been, and then start your next line next to it, one side or the other, right? And fill in those spaces that are there, right, to create that gradient, simple. So that's it, that's a quick way to shade anything very quickly. Just think about that. When, when you're doing all these randomizations, right, you're relying on luck realistically to get the pigment in there. When we're running lines, we're committing something to the skin, we're confident in it, and we know what we're doing. We know that as we go, we are leaving ink. We know when it runs out, we need to redrip, and we know light redip. And we know like 
what the result is going to be when we're doing it. But when we're doing shading, it's just kind of hectic, right? So treat shading like lining. That can make things happen a lot quicker. Anyways, that's it for today. I'm Ryan from Bitter Tattooing, signing off.